We've been examining the frequency response of different transfer functions. In other words, how do they behave for sinusoidal inputs? And two aspects of those include uh, asymptotic behaviors for low frequencies and high frequencies, where we're talking about frequencies much lower or greater than the corner frequency. Here we're going to just review how we compute those asymptotes. If you have a string of S's of different powers, such as this polynomial here, and you're interested in the low frequency behavior, the thing to re recall is that we're going to plug in S equals J omega, and for low frequencies, this means we're plugging in close to S equals zero, in which case the constant term, the four, is going to dominate. In contrast, if you have high frequencies and you plug in S equals J omega, then all of the other terms are, good, are going to be small relative to this term here, which is just going to be equivalent to J omega cubed. We'll also add another piece of information, which is that when we plug in S equals J omega, and you have J omega raised to the nth power, this is the same thing as omega to the nth power as a magnitude with an angle of n times 90 degrees. And the reason for this is because this term is just J to the n times omega to the n, and j to the n is the same thing as one angle 90 degrees, that's what j is, raised to the nth power, which is one angle n times 90 degrees. So if you combine that with the omega to the n, that's how we get this thing right here. So in other words, every time you have a j raised to some power, you're going to have an angle that's going to be n times 90 degrees. Let's do an example. Here we have a transfer function 10s over s plus 1. I'm just going to copy that again and first talk about the low frequency behaviors. For low frequencies, s is going to be small, and so this is going to be dominated by the 1. So this is essentially pretty close to 10s, where we want to plug in j omega, and what we get from that is a magnitude of 10 omega at an angle of 90 degrees. For high frequencies, our 10s over s plus 1. In this case, s is going to dominate the 1, and so we could ignore this second part. And instead, what we'd end up with is uh, just 10 with an angle of 0 degrees. Here's another example. Here's uh, h of s is equal to s plus 1 over s cubed plus s plus 2. Again, we'll copy it over, and then we'll plug in low frequencies, which means we get to ignore all of these low terms, and what we end up is one half. So we have one half at an angle of zero degrees. Similarly, we have s plus one over s cubed plus s plus two, where for high frequencies, the s, the largest terms of s are going to dominate, and we just end up with one over s squared, which is going to give us omega 1 over omega squared at an angle of negative 180 degrees. Here's the summary of what we talked about. We said for low frequencies, if you have terms of different powers of s, that the constants are going to dominate. In other words, you can cross out everything with an s in it. On the other hand, when you have a high frequency behavior, the highest power of s is going to dominate, and so you can cross out everything else. When you're left with uh, whatever uh, remains in your polynomial, then we plug in s equals j omega, and just remember that that's equivalent to omega to the nth power with an angle of n times 90 degrees. And then we did examples using these two transfer functions.